let us discuss a new unit pledge now students pledge is a kind of bailment we just discussed the concept of bailment in the last unit and pledge is a kind of bailment then why are we studying it separately there are a few differences and we are going to study those differences in this unit now it is said that pledge is a kind of bailment why is it a bailment in bailment there is delivery of goods what is delivery delivery means voluntary transfer of possession possession is transferred ownership is not transferred there is no transfer of ownership so in case of bailment we deliver the goods delivery means transfer of possession possession is transferred ownership is not transferred and these are the exact characteristics of pledge as well in pledge we deliver the goods to the other person there is voluntary transfer of possession only possession is transferred ownership is not transferred that is why pledge is a kind of bailment then what is the difference between bailment and pledge in pledge we don't just deliver the goods we deliver the goods as security for loan or maybe performance of contract do you remember in the last unit we had discussed that bailment is for care taking of the goods like say for example i am going out of station for 3 to 4 days so i requested my neighbor to take care of my dog my neighbor agreed that is bailment so care taking is bailment acha i want to transfer goods from one place to another i want to transport so i gave the goods to a carrier giving goods to the carrier for carriage that is also bailment so in bailment my main purpose is care taking my main purpose may be transportation it may be using the goods as per the instructions of the bailor but in case of pledge my purpose is very clear in pledge we are delivering the goods as security now let's say for example that x went to a jeweler he requested the jeweler for loan jeweler says okay i'll give you loan but i need some security so x says please take keys to my locker or my safe i have kept five to six pieces of jewelry in that you take that and give me money as security uh, uh, money as loan so x gave his keys to the jeweler and obtain loan from the jeweler giving the keys is like giving the jewelry this is nothing but pledge so in case of pledge we give something but as security we are not merely delivering the goods we are not merely transferring the possession we are transferring we are delivering the goods as security another example let's say for example that x has purchased goods from y this is their first transaction and the goods are of rupees 5 lakhs y agreed but then he changed his mind he's like this is my first transaction with you how can i give you goods on credit what if you don't pay the money no 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 let's cancel the contract x says are trust me i will pay y says no no i don't trust you what if you don't pay the money what if you don't perform your promise x immediately removes his gold bracelet and his gold watch and gives it to y and says you keep this gold watch and gold bracelet when i come to collect this i will also bring 5 lakh towards the goods now will you trust me y says okay now you can take the goods on credit so here x has given his gold watch or he has given let's say his gold bracelet as security and he has promised that i will perform the promise don't worry i will perform the contract whatever you are giving as security is nothing 
but pledge so what is the main difference between bailment and pledge in bailment yes i am delivering the goods but my purpose is not giving those goods as security whereas in case of pledge my main purpose is to give it as security like in hindi we say girvi rakhna so this is nothing but girvi rakhna it's pledge so in pledge we give the goods as security either for loan or just to give an assurance are don't worry i will perform the contract take my scooter okay you keep it with you as security now will you give me the goods so you are giving it as an assurance for performance of promise for performance of contract you are just giving an assurance to the other party that is nothing but pledge okay so let's do a quick round up and then i'll give you uh, this note properly in sentence form but i know many a time students feel that ma'am wait 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 we want to write this also so if you want to write this then please pause the video and write this in your textbook or if you have prepared a notebook write in the notebook give the heading as pledge and write these pointers around pledge then i'll also give it to you in a proper sentence format so pause the video and write this all right done ready okay so let's do a quick round up let's do a quick revision of what we discussed let's take down proper notes for last minute revision so what is pledge we can say that pledge is a kind of bailment see i'm preparing last minute revision notes for you okay so what we are doing is preparing last minute revision notes one and a half day before the exam you can refer these notes pledge is a kind of bailment the more we write and practice the better we will get at this subject what is bailment bailment involves delivery of goods bailment means to deliver what is delivery see the points are interlinked they are related to the word that we have used in the previous point what is delivery delivery is nothing but voluntary transfer of possession we are only transferring the possession we are not transferring ownership can you tell me when is ownership transferred yes you are right ownership is transferred in case of sale and not in case of pledge or bailment so what is bail uh, what is pledge pledge is a kind of bailment possession is transferred ownership is not transferred okay then we discussed why is this pledge given why are these goods given yes in this case the goods are given as security for what for loan or it is an assurance for performance of promise so let's say for example that x okay let's say for example that x he purchased goods from y worth rupees 5 lakhs and he gave his gold watch as security now the watch is valued at rupees 6 lakhs so when you give goods as security anything that is movable okay you give those goods as security it is pledge what if x repays the uh, sorry x pays that 5 lakh rupees what will y do with that watch can he keep it no he'll have to return it so when x pays 5 lakhs y will return the watch but the problem arises when x fails to pay then what will y do y can sell the watch yes he can sell the watch to some third person and recover his money but my question over your students is that why is not the owner yes or no he is not the owner then ideally sale by him should not be valid no third party should also not get ownership but unless and until you don't sell the goods how will you recover your money so let's put this in an exception okay so let's say that even though y is not the owner third party will get 
good ownership title this is an exception that even though y is not the owner third party will get good ownership title so can i say this is sale by non owner valid yes it is exception to sale by non owner okay let's discuss further what if y sold this watch for 8 lakh rupees y sold this watch for 8 lakh rupees he has to recover only 5 lakh rupees from x then what about the difference that he will have to return it to x see he is not the owner of the goods he can sell the goods but he cannot keep the profit with himself so if he has if he has sold the watch for 8 lakhs he owes uh, x owes only 5 lakhs so he will have to return the 3 lakh rupees excess profit to x yeah he can keep money if they have agreed for interest or some other charges etc but he will have to return what if the watch is sold only for 4 lakhs now we had to recover 5 lakh rupees from him and the watch was sold only for rupees 4 lakhs so this 1 lakh rupees we can recover from x we can recover that from x so can i say that if the loan is repaid if the money is re if the money is paid if the perform if the contract is performed then y will return the security but under exceptional circumstances y can sell the goods so we'll add that also sale by non owner and sale is valid under exceptional circumstances so students these are our last minute notes the entire introduction is covered over here okay so now you can pause the video write all this and then we will discuss more examples so pause the video now done okay mr a took loan from b and he gave his jewelry as security as soon as i hear the word security immediately my mind will say this is pledge this is pledge yes see it is very easy to remember pledge what is pledge pledge means i'll write it over here okay what is pledge pledge means to part with possession see these are different ways in which you can remember p p p to part with possession in pledge we transfer possession in mortgage we don't transfer possession now the person who pledges the goods is known as the pledger he is sometimes also known as the bailer because he is very similar to bailer no see pledge is a kind of bailment so all the essentials of bailment will apply to pledge also the person who pledges the goods is known as pawner or pledger now what is a pawn pledge is also known as aka means also known as pawn have you seen on history channel pawn stars have you seen that show if you have anything valuable you can go give it as security and take loan against it in india you don't have these pawn shops in india this work is done by jewelers so you give your valuable jewelry and you can obtain loan i don't want to go to the bank they have lot of covenants lot of conditions jeweler is easy you give some jewelry they will give you money against it so the person who pledges is known as pledger or pawner because pledge is known as pawn the person to whom the goods are pledged is known as pawnee or pledgee he is also sometimes known as bailee why because it is very similar to bailment na do you remember in pledge there is no change in property property means ownership yes there is no change in ownership of the property ownership is changed when yes ownership is transferred in case of sale so in pledge there is no change in the ownership of the property in case of sale property will be transferred 
so students this is something about pledge we discussed the parties now let us take few more examples of pledge you want to write this okay then you can pause the video and write i'll just move a little so that you can get the spellings right done all right x took a loan of rupees 20000 from y and gave his stereo stereo means music system as security my mind is on high alert when i read the word security i immediately tell this is pledge so over here he took loan the person who takes loan the borrower is also known as the pledger or pawner do you remember this and the person who gives the loan the lender is also known as pledgy or pawny mary took loan of rupees 5 lakh from john and gave the keys to the safe deposit box at the bank as security this is also pledge students did you notice something here he has given his stereo as security it means he has physically given it he has physically delivered the possession this is nothing but actual delivery but instead of giving the goods if you give the keys then no no it's not symbolic we had discussed last time that from now onwards you have only two delivery actual and constructive so what kind of delivery is it this is constructive delivery okay so taking loan giving something as security either you physically give it or you give some keys that is constructive delivery there is delivery for security either as loan of a performance of promise this is nothing but pledge now next let us discuss the definition of pledge let's go through the definition of pledge section 172 defines pledge now definition is important because uh, sometimes when you are asked a question on essential elements then you will have to first define pledge and then mention the essential elements and if you are writing a definition then you need to quote the section number also section 172 defines pledge now which are the other sections involved in pledge that we will be discussing shortly it is said that pledge is bailment of goods as security so i have highlighted the keywords i have highlighted the essential elements the first element is that pledge is bailment now pledge is a special kind of bailment okay i'll write it over here pledge is a special kind of bailment since it is a kind of bailment all the essential elements of bailment are present there are few other essential elements also which we will discuss in the next slide but it has all the essentials of bailment there is delivery of goods there is some purpose and what is the purpose it is given as security what is given as security goods are given goods means every kind of movable property movable means we can move them we can deliver them see what is bailment bailment is delivery so you can deliver only goods movable property so what are we giving we are giving goods why are we giving we are giving it as security for what it is a security for payment of debt that don't worry i will repay the loan or it is given as a security for performance of the promise don't worry i will perform my promise this is called as pledge or it is also known as pawn so what are the important points in the definition it is a bailment of what of goods why as security for what for for payment of debt or performance of promise so these are also the three important elements of pledge
if you want you can write this in the definition and then we will proceed to essentials of pledge done okay now what are the essential elements of pledge pledge is a special kind of bailment so all the essential elements of bailment are present but apart from that there are other essential elements that it is not only just delivered but it is given as security why are we giving it as security for payment of debt or for performance of a promise it is an assurance that don't worry i will perform the promise i am giving something as security goods are the subject matter of the contract of bailment because it is possible to deliver goods goods are nothing but movable property and only this can be delivered goods are the subject matter of contract of pledge the goods which are pledged must be in existence and there must be delivery from the pawner to the pawnee so it can be either physical delivery or constructive delivery but the goods should move from the pawner to the pawnee i'm not transferring ownership but i'm only giving the possession so students these are the essentials of pledge now let us also go through the different sections that we are going to study in this chapter let us discuss the various sections relating to pledge we will start with 172 and we will end at 181 Section one seventy two defines pledge. It defines pawner and pawnee or pledger and pledgee. So pledge, pawner and pawnee they are defined in section one seventy two. Then section one seventy three to one seventy six, it discusses rights of the pawnee. Okay, rights of pawnee. Pawnee is the person to whom the goods are given as pledge. i am not discussing it over here because we are going to study this separately so i'll explain it over there you can pause the video write the list in your notebook you will understand this slowly as we discuss the provisions then we have section 177 it is defaulting pawners right to redeem now what if the uh, pledge has a fixed time stipulated time for the repayment of loan or for performance of promise so let's say that a time is fixed where the pledger has to perform the promise but he fails he commits some kind of delay then he has the right to still redeem that is repay the money maybe he'll have to repay along with interest or other charges but he has the time to repay the loan till the pawnee sells the goods see we discussed earlier that if the pawner fails to repay the okay if the pawner means pledger someone was given the goods on pledge if the pawner fails to repay okay fails to redeem pawnee has the right to sell the goods but until the pawnee exercises that right pawner still has time even though there is a delay he still has time to repay the loan to perform the promise maybe along with interest or other expenses he can exercise this right till the pony sells the goods after the goods are sold then we can't do anything pony has recovered the money after this we are going to study pledge by non owner just like how we discussed sale by non owner in sale of goods act we will discuss pledge by non owner that is covered in section 178 178a and 179 180 and 181 we are not going to discuss because this is not covered in the module both sections are not covered so it is not there in your syllabus that is why we are not going to discuss that but i just wanted to give you a list that there are 172 to 181 sections which we are going to cover in pledge so now you can pause the video write the entire list in your notebook students now let us discuss rights of pawnee who is a pawnee we had discussed in the last video yes pawnee is similar to bailee 
So rights of Pawnee are similar to rights of Bailey. There are two parties in pledge. Let's say that X gave his jewellery to a jeweller and he obtained loan against it. Okay, he gave his jewellery and obtained loan against it. X is known as the pawner and dweller is the pawnee. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss rights of the pawnee person to whom the goods are pledged. The first right that he has is right of retainer. To retain means to keep with oneself. Section 173. This section number is very important for exam because it can be asked in a case-based question. Rights of Pony basically covers section 173, 174, 175 and 176. Out of these four sections, the first two are extremely important for case-based questions. So he has a right to retain, means to keep with oneself. This is like right of Lian. Now let's say for example that the bank lends money to M against security of stock. Now if the bank has to keep the stock, it cannot keep it in the bank premises. So the bank has taken a go down on hire. So they are paying rent. Now the bank is going to take care of the stock. It is going to incur expenses. Uh, in the go down, they have appointed a watchman to look after the stock. They have kept it in a well ventilated room, sometimes AC. So there is a lot of expense, no? Is the bank going to incur that expense? No. Bank will later recover it from M. What if M fails to pay? What if he refuses to pay? Bank will retain the stock. So the bank can retain the stock not only for the payment of the debt or performance of promise. It means the principal amount. But it can also retain the stock for interest and other expenses incurred for possession and preservation of the goods pledged. So let's recap. The bank has taken the stock as security. Bank will keep the security until M pays the or repays the loan. Now the bank can retain the security not only for the principal amount but for interest and other expenses also which it has incurred to keep the goods safe and to preserve the goods. So this is section 173. Section 174 says that the right of retention applies to subsequent debts also. Now let's understand this with the help of an example. A gives loan of rupees 10,000 to B and B has given his gold plated watch as security. Then A further gives loan of rupees 5,000 to B and this time B has not given any security. Now my question is, can A retain the watch and apply it for both these loans? Can he apply it for both 10,000 10, as well as 5,000? Yes. See, if you are giving the money to the same person, okay, you gave money, you took security, then you again gave the same person more money. In that case, you can continue to retain and apply the goods pledged to subsequent advances, subsequent debts also. This is a presumption. Law says you need not agree. You need not enter into any agreement. You need not expressly write in the court. It's presumed that you can apply it to the subsequent advances also. Okay, let me give you a variation. Okay, answer this question. What if B repays the first loan, but he has not yet repaid the second loan? Can, the, can A continue to retain the security for the second loan? Yes, even if the first loan is repaid. B cannot say, see, I have repaid the first loan. No, I had given watch as a security against first loan. That I have repaid. Give me back my security. No. If money is advanced to the same person twice, then the, the pony, oh, sorry, the, the, the pony can retain the goods and apply it for subsequent debts also. Ideally, okay, ideally, 
pony is entitled to retain the goods for any debt promise he cannot do so other than the debt or promise for which the goods were pledged so ideally speaking a can retain the goods only for the promise or for the debt for which the goods were pledged but there is an exception if the pony lends money to the same debtor after the date of pledge without any further security like in my example you were giving money to the same person without any security no second time we didn't take any security it shall be presumed so our keyword is presumed it shall be presumed that the right of retainer over the pledged goods extends even to subsequent advances unless unless it is otherwise excluded uh, or it is otherwise provided in the contract so we are presuming okay we assume that you can apply this to the subsequent debt also but by an agreement you can exclude this right okay you can say no no i have given the security for the first debt you can apply it only for the first debt and not the second one that can be provided in the contract but unless you have this by default law says if there is nothing mentioned in the contract by default you can retain it for the second and subsequent loan yeah but through an agreement you can always write and say that we will not apply it to the subsequent debt okay so you can provide this separately in the contract the third right is right to seek reimbursement of extraordinary expenses section 175 we have discussed this in bailment what are ordinary expenses ordinary expenses are those expenses which we know are going to be incurred like i gave my dog to the neighbor for safe keeping like for keep for 2 3 days now i'm going out of station now dog is going to eat that's an ordinary expense i'm i know that expense will incur then what are extraordinary expenses extraordinary expenses are those expenses which i had not anticipated like the dog fell ill and had to be taken to a vet i didn't know that that the expense is going to incur such expenses are known as extraordinary expenses law says that listen pony if you are not receiving the ordinary expenses from the pawner we studied no earlier that the pony has the right to recover the principal amount interest and other expenses and if they don't receive it if they don't recover it they can retain the goods so in case of ordinary expenses if the pawner is not paying you pony you can retain the goods but for extraordinary expenses i cannot retain the goods yeah i cannot retain the goods but yes i can definitely sue i can file a case for recovery all right so now you can pause this video students and note this in your notebook or maybe textbook pause the video now done theek hai let us read the pony has a right to recover from the pawner extraordinary expense so right hai he has the right but for these extraordinary expenses how will you exercise this right by retaining the goods or by filing a case only filing a case he cannot retain the goods if these expenses are not paid but yes he has the right to sue he can file a case for against the pawner for recovery of these extraordinary expenses so this is under section 170 5 right to sue or sell the word or tells us that these are alternative rights and not cumulative it means you can either sue or sell you can't do both now let's say that x gave his jewelry as security to the jeweler and he obtained loan against it what if x is not repaying the loan it's simple jeweler will sell the jewelry and recover the money so jeweler has a right to sell but what if jeweler had retail had returned the jewelry okay he had returned or maybe he is not finding a market for it then in that case if you are not selling you can sue you can file a case 
the jeweler is not the owner ah yes you guessed it right you knew what question i'm are going to ask even though he is not the jeweler third party will get a good title it's an exception we discussed it in the first lecture sale is valid under exceptional circumstances what if the jeweler sold the jewelry at profit can he retain the profit no he is not the owner he can't retain it but what if he sells it at a loss then can he recover that loss from x yes so students let us discuss this in case the pawner fails to redeem the debt or perform the promise pawn he has a right to sue alternatively he can under certain circumstances sell the goods by giving reasonable notice see giving notice is a statutory requirement you have to give notice so this is a statutory requirement you have to give notice see notice acts as a threat as well as as a reminder sale without notice is not valid but what if pony has sold the goods to a third person who buys it in good faith then in that case the sale will be valid he will get good ownership title what about the poor pawner he lost his goods na now the third person is owner pawner don't worry you can recover the compensation or damages from the pawner okay. so sale will be valid if the third party buys in good faith if you want you can pause the video students and write this let's continue if there is loss it is recoverable and if there is profit it is returnable okay this is one very important provision and it can be asked in case based questions pony cannot sell the goods to himself now very interesting pony has given his goods to the pony pony says why should i sell it let me keep it for myself i'll say i'll i only buy it i'll buy those goods no you can't do that pony cannot sell the goods to himself and if he does that sale will be void are very good pony listen the sale is void you can even now repay the money and get back your goods sale is void the goods are still with the pony the pony can recover the goods on paying the amount and he can recover his goods i think this is a good provision so if the pony is keeping the goods for himself sale is void pony you still still have an opportunity go repay the debt recover your goods so students these are rights of the pony section 172 170 173 174, 174, 174, 174, 175 and 176 next let us discuss duties of the pony now i have uh, prepared a this is a sort of mnemonic yes it is a mnemonic kamra it means in hindi it means room now what are the duties of pony see duties of pony are very similar to duties of bailey you have to take care of the goods what is the meaning of reasonable care see reasonable care means care like a prudent man like an ordinary person would take care of the goods so if you are you have those goods take care of the goods like a prudent man return the goods after the loan is repaid not to make unauthorized use of the goods now do you remember the example which i had discussed in bailment uh, i gave a horse to y for his own riding he gave the horse to his to his friend friend rode the horse but the horse fell and it was injured so we can claim compensation this is an unauthorized use so pony you are not supposed to make any unauthorized use of the goods you can't use the goods for yourself you can't sell it you can't give it to someone don't mix the goods with your own goods duty to return the goods on repayment or performance of the promise so if the pawner has repaid the loan he has performed his promise return the security to him give it back to him and return the accretions 
to the goods accretion means additions profit return it come on return it like you remember we had bailed a cow cow gave birth to a calf that calf is an accretion when we repay the loan we are entitled to receive not only the cow but also the calf we had given bon we had given shares as security company issued bonus shares you are entitled to recover not only the shares but also bonus shares yes so students this was the mnemonic and the provision so that it is easy for you to remember generally a question is not asked on duties of pony and if they ask they will club it with some other question or they can ask what are the rights and duties of pony they can ask it together but this is a very small part to ask individually so in this video students we discuss rights and duties of pony in my next video i am going to discover rights and duties of pawner so i'll see you there <music> students in the last video we discussed the rights and duties of pawner now let us discuss rights and duties of pawner not very important for exam but yes we need to cover everything that is why we are discussing it otherwise it's okay if you just read it once before the exam the first right is right to redeem now sometimes there may be a stipulated time given to the pawner to make the payment or a stipulated time may be given to perform the promise let's say that i have asked him to repay the money in 2 months time or i have asked him to perform the promise in 15 days so if a stipulated means if a fixed time is given to the pawner then he has to perform the contract he has to make the payment within that time but sometimes the pawner defaults i had asked him to repay the loan in 2 months he has not paid i had asked him to perform the promise in 15 days he has not performed so in that case the pawner can sell the goods that's what we discussed but if the pony has not yet sold the goods we can tell the pawner are listen pony has not yet sold the goods you pay some additional charges for late uh, payment and you can get back your goods avail of that opportunity so in this case the pawner still has some time before the pony uh, sells the goods to redeem his debt to redeem the goods pledged at any subsequent time at any later time by paying additional expenses we had also studied that pawner has to pay the principal interest other expenses if he has not re if he has not paid all of that if he has defaulted pawner can sell the goods but if the pawner has not yet sold the goods pawner you still have time pay some additional charges even though your time has expired and you can get back your pledged goods the second right is to get the pony's duties duly enforced see on the previous in the previous slide we had studied the duties of pony so the pawner can ensure that the these duties are duly enforced so that is the second right available right to sue now pawner okay pawner has paid the debt he has performed the promise but this pony is not returning the goods pawner file a case you can sue the pony but within how much time do we have to file a case we have 3 years so case can be filed within 3 years where is that given law of limitation yes so in case the pawner has paid the money but pony is not returning the goods pawner has the right to sue but within a period of 3 years this is given in the law of limitation so this can be exercised in case the pony refuses to return the goods even after payment of debt so students these were the rights of pony uh, rights of pawner sorry now let us discuss the duties of pawner pawner has the duty to comply with the terms of the pledge see whenever you pledge your goods for loan you may have entered into some agreement so it is your duty to comply with the terms of the pledge so you have to make the payment on time 
you have to pay within the stipulated time whatever there are conditions in the pledge comply with those duty to compensate the pony for extraordinary expenses see duty of pawner will be rights of pony it is the right of pony to recover the extraordinary expenses so it is the duty of the pawner to pay for those extraordinary expenses duty to pay loss on sale due to default so pawner has not repaid the loan pony can sell the goods but what if the pony incurs loss he can recover it from the pawner pawner it's your duty to pay for the loss to the pony duty to disclose all the material faults in the goods pledge now let's say that i pledge my scooter to you it is my duty to tell you that the brakes are not working properly there is less air in the tire rear tire so it is my duty to tell you because it is going to interfere in the use of your goods very similar to bailment yes so it is my duty to disclose all the material facts duty to indemnify duty to compensate the pony for any loss caused due to the pawner's defective title see now the basic rule is that pawner can pledge only those goods of which he is the owner he cannot pledge the goods of which he is not the owner just like sale you can sell only those goods of which you are the owner what if pawner is not the owner and he is pledging the goods pledge is not valid ah huh, in that case what if pony suffers loss due to this defective title pony don't worry you can recover all that from the pawner you can recover that loss that damage which you have suffered from the pawner pawner it is your duty to indemnify the pony for any loss suffered due to your defective title maybe the true owner filed a case against the pony recovered some expenses compensation pony don't worry you can recover all that from the pawner so students these were the duties of the pawner it's just like it's or for reading only okay so rights and duties of pawner were covered in my next video i am going to discuss pledge by non owner very similar to sale by non owner yes this is very important for case based questions so i'll discuss that in detail in the next video pledge by non owners one very important part for exam theory or case based questions can be asked from this let us go through the circumstances where pledge by non owner is valid now students the basic rule is that only the owner can sell the goods only the owner can pledge the goods but there are certain exceptional circumstances wherein pledge by non owner is valid the first case is pledge by mercantile agent section 178 section number very important for exam generally a case based question will be asked but you will be expected to write the entire theory first now who is a mercantile agent mercantile means he is my business agent what can he do for me so a mercantile agent can sell goods consign goods buy goods or raise money on security of goods all for and on behalf of the principal so mercantile agent has the authority he doesn't have the auto, he doesn't have an automatic authority okay we give him that authority expressly through a power of attorney so principal has authorized the agent it is very important that we provide him with authority so we have authorized him to sell goods consign goods buy goods or raise money on security of goods all on behalf of the principal principal can't be present at every place of business that is why he appoints agents now these agents can buy goods sell goods consign goods raise money on security of goods this is nothing but pledge if you are raising loan and giving goods as security this is nothing but pledge but please note that this is possible only when you have authority from the principal now what happened in our case let's say x he consigned goods to his mercantile sorry he allowed his mercantile agent to sell goods okay so he has allowed the mercantile agent to sell goods to buy goods 
to consign goods but he has not given mercantile agent the authority to pledge the goods as security okay so he has not given mercantile agent the authority to give the goods as credit and raise money now our mercantile agent pledged the goods with p he pledged the goods with p the pony and he obtained loan against those goods he may have used the loan for business that is not our discussion so in my example x allowed the mercantile agent to buy goods sell goods consign goods but he did not allow the mercantile agent to pledge the goods however mercantile agent pledged the goods with a pony now pony had no reason to doubt he thought that the mercantile agent has come with the goods the mercantile agent in the ordinary course of business generally has the authority to pledge the goods so he had no reason to doubt he in fact gave the loan in good faith without knowing that mercantile agent has no authority to pledge he was not aware at all law says if certain conditions are satisfied then pledge by such mercantile agent not having the authority even then it will be valid so here mercantile agent does not have the authority to pledge the goods even then under certain circumstances pledge will be valid and let us see what are the conditions to be satisfied the first requirement is that the mercantile agent must be in possession of the goods he has the goods with him or he has the document of title he has the ownership documents with him with the consent of owner see owner has given these goods so that the mercantile agent could sell them further or you know to consign them further he never expected the mercantile agent to go and pledge the goods but the mercantile agent pledges the goods in the ordinary course of business as a mercantile agent pony has no notice that the pawner agent has no authority to pledge he thought that since most of the agents have the authority to pledge this guy also has one and he has acted in good faith so if all these conditions are satisfied okay all have to be complied with only then pledge by such mercantile agent will be valid even though he acts beyond authority so all these conditions have to be satisfied now if pledge is valid what does it mean x has given a car to the mercantile agent without the authority to pledge but we are saying that under certain circumstances if the pony acts in good faith without knowledge pledge is valid so if pledge is valid it means that x will retain the goods sorry not x the pony will retain the goods till he receives or recovers his loan so if the pledge is valid okay pledge is valid it means that you can retain the goods till you are paid the money till you are repaid the loan so that is the implication of pledge is valid this is section 178 and as i already informed section 138 is important for exam next we have pledge by person in possession under a voidable contract when is the contract voidable when consent is obtained by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation mistake that's void yes so in case the consent is obtained by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation then the contract is voidable now let's see what happens in this voidable contract x by fraud obtained a necklace from y okay he has committed fraud and obtained necklace contract is voidable at the option of y voidable means y has two options keep quiet treat the contract as valid or cancel the contract but before y could cancel the contract x pledges the necklace with z 
Z has no idea about the fraud. He takes this in good faith without knowing that X is not the owner. He has in fact obtained the necklace by fraud. He had no idea. Law is now asking whether Z will get a good title. Is the pledge valid in this case? See students, the main contract was not cancelled and X pledged the goods. It simply means that the main contract was valid. If the main contract remained valid, it is understood that the collateral is also valid. The pledge is valid. Okay, the pledge is valid. It means that Z will not return the necklace unless and until he receives the money. So if Y wants to obtain back her necklace, Y will have to pay the money to Z, obtain the necklace and then recover the money from X. That's not a problem. But law simply says pledge is valid. This was the same example we discussed in sale by non-owner. Do you remember? Let us read the theory now. Pledge by person in possession under a voidable contract. Now for the pledge to be valid, pawner must be in possession of the goods. Uh, sorry, uh, pawner is in possession of the goods under a contract voidable on the grounds of coercion, undue influence, fraud or misrepresentation. So this is the first requirement. Goods are pledged before the contract is rescinded rescinded means cancelled before the main contract was cancelled we sold we pledged the goods it means the main contract remained valid so here you can write down that the main contract was valid and if the main contract was valid obviously the pledge the collateral was also valid pony has acted in good faith he had no knowledge that Pawner's title was defective. So he is innocent. He has no knowledge that Pawner's title was defective. If all these conditions are satisfied, then the pledge is valid. Section 178A, section number, very important for exam. Next, we have pledge by co-owner in possession. Let's say that X, Y, Z they jointly own a piece of furniture. Now this furniture is kept with X with the consent of Y and Z. So the furniture is in the possession of X. Now tell me students, can X on his own, okay, on his own, pledge the goods with P without asking Y and Z? Can he on his own pledge the goods? No, you are joint owners, you are co-owners. You can't take decision for the others, no? So, ideally, X is not the only owner. He can't pledge the furniture. But, he pledged the furniture and as usual, P took it in good faith without knowledge that they were co-owners. See, P had no reason to doubt. X got the furniture. It was in his possession. So, we thought, maybe he has the right. So over here, even though X alone cannot pledge, pledge is valid. Okay, pledge is valid. Now, what are the conditions to be satisfied? The first condition is that the goods must be owned by one or more persons. It means there are co-owners. Goods must be in possession of one of the co-owners. So in my example, the goods were in the possession of X and with the consent of Y and Z, other owners. In my example, it was Y and Z. So it is in possession of one of the co-owners and while it is in his possession, he pledges the goods further. Pledge is valid. Yes, it is valid. Then we have pledge by seller or buyer in possession after sale. Okay, I'll discuss uh, the two parts separately. You know, these, this particular provision is divided into two parts. I'll discuss both separately. First, let us discuss about seller who is left in possession of the goods after sale. Okay, and then I will discuss with you buyer obtaining possession with the consent of seller before sale. Okay, I'll discuss that later. 
Now for the first bracket, let us discuss a, uh, with the help of an example. Seller has sold the goods, but he has not yet delivered the goods. The goods are still in his possession. Now over here, X sold a car to Y. Okay, he has sold the car. So he sold the car to Y. But he has not transferred the possession. He has not given delivery. He says that uh, I'll give you the delivery after cleaning, polishing the car. So he says, let me keep the car for two days. I'll clean it, polish it, and then I'll give it to you after two days. While the car was in the possession of X, he pledged it with Z. Okay, he pledged it. See, now X has sold the car. It means Y is the owner. X is no longer the owner. But even then, since the car was in his possession, he pledged the car further. My question is, is the pledge valid? Answer is yes. Yes, the pledge is valid. Why? See, X has never delivered the goods. They were in his possession. Z, as usual, took it in good faith without knowing about the previous sale. If the car is in your possession, you will assume no, that it is, it is yours. It is you. You still have the ownership. Sale is valid. Let me take a variation. X delivered the car to Y. Then Y returned it for some repairs. And while the car was in possession of X, he, he pledged the car. Now, is the pledge valid? No. Because when X takes the car for repairs, he acts just like a Bailey. And Bailey cannot sell, he cannot pledge the goods. In the second scenario, pledge will not be valid. Ki pledge is not valid. So over here, students, seller who is left in possession of the goods, even after sale, then the pledge will be valid if pledgee has acted in good faith. He has no notice about the previous sale of goods. Pledge is valid. Now let us discuss buyer who obtains the possession of goods before the ownership has passed to him. All Everything is happening with the consent of the seller. Now, X is the owner of goods. He has sold a sofa set to Y, but he has not given the ownership. He is still the owner. He tells Y, I will give you the ownership only when you pay the price. So, X has given the possession, but he has not yet given the ownership. He will give the ownership when Y pays the price. Okay. While the sofa set was in the possession of X, of Y, he pledged the sofa set with Z. Okay, he is the pony. Is the pledge valid? Is it valid? Answer is yes. See, pledgey has acted in good faith. He has no knowledge that Y only has the possession. He is not yet the owner. Pledge is valid. So, pledge by non-owner in this case is valid. Next, we have pledge where pawner has limited interest. So, law says your pledge will be valid only to the extent of interest. Jitna interest, utni pledge valid. I'll discuss this with an example. X found a defective watch on the road. Okay, the watch was defective. He spent 100 rupees on its repairs. Okay. The watch was defective. He spent 100 rupees on its repairs. Then he pledged the watch with Y. He pledged the watch with Y for rupees 300. Later, Z, the true owner of the watch, came to know about it. He demanded the watch from Y. Y is saying that I have given money against it. It is as pledge. Z says, all right, if I would have got the watch repaired, I would have also spent 100 rupees. 
आई लॉस्ट अ डिफेक्टिव वॉच बट आई गेन्ड अ प्रॉपर रिपेयर्ड वॉच सो फॉर मी द प्लेज इज वैलिड ओनली टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ माई इंटरेस्ट दैट इज हंड्रेड रुपीज वाई से इज ऑल राइट जेड यू गिव मी हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड टेक द वॉच बिकॉज द वॉच बिलोंग्स टू यू बट वाई हैज पेड थ्री हंड्रेड रुपीज he can later recover 200 rupees from x and x will pay only 200 because that is his interest he spent 100 rupees on repair and he got benefit of only 200 rupees so for him the pledge is valid only to the extent of 200 so y will get 100 rupees from z 200 rupees from x and he got his 300 rupees back but what we need to remember is that z's interest is only 100 rupees so he will give 100 rupees and he will get back the watch so in this case students uh, i hope you can see what is written behind i'm not erasing the example you can pause and write the example if you want okay in this case pledge is by a person who has only limited interest it is valid to the extent of that interest so i will pay only what i am interested in only the benefit that i have received and pledge is valid only to the extent of that interest so students with this we have finished our discussion on pledge by non owner and with this we also come to an end of our unit on pledge so we discussed the rights of pawner duties rights of pawnee the duties pledge by non owner everything is covered in detail so with this we come to an end of our lecture as well as the unit on pledge